Hi everyone, this is Sam and welcome to Wing Logic. Today's grammar video is the third in the series on conditionals and we'll be talking about the third and mixed conditionals together. I'd originally planned this as a single video on all unreal conditionals, but I then split it into two just to make it a little bit less heavy. But I highly recommend you watch the one on the second conditional as we'll be using the same technique and structure today. In my opinion, there are two ways to learn conditionals. You can learn the logic and thought process behind it, which is what we're going to do today, because as a teacher I have to explain to you how conditionals work technically, but I think that's the harder of the two. When I speak a foreign language, I do not use this method, and I use a much simpler and easier one, for me at least, and I will talk about that later on. Conditionals are fancy way to express very basic and simple concepts that are related to two main areas. Time, so when something happens, present, past, future, or always, and probability, possible, impossible, or certain. We will use the same technique as in the first video. I will give you the very basic concepts that conditionals express, and I want you to transform them into a conditional in your native language first, using the equivalent of if. You're very welcome to pause the video and come up with your solution. Once you've done that, we can then explore the English version. The concept is, I didn't win the lottery, so I didn't go on holiday. In English we get, if I had won the lottery, I would have gone on holiday. It happens in the past and it's impossible because you can't change the past. And in every language, when you want to convey the idea of an impossible fact in the past, you use a third conditional, which in English is created with if plus past perfect subjunctive, followed by a past conditional. The past perfect subjunctive is exactly the same as the past perfect indicative. We use had plus the past participle, I had won, gone, walked. The past conditional is created with would plus have plus the past participle, walked, done, gone. In terms of pronunciation, if I had won, becomes if I'd won, or we can transform had into the weak form had, so if I had won. In I would have gone, have becomes weak and goes of, and would can stay would or simply d. So you can say I'd have gone or I would have gone. I will link here a video on how to pronounce auxiliary verbs in weak forms. Just like in the second conditional, everything here is impossible, so it's the opposite of reality. I didn't study hard, so I didn't go to uni, becomes if I had studied hard, I would have gone to uni. And you can also play with it. I worked late, so I didn't catch the burglar, becomes if I hadn't worked late, I would have caught the burglar. So far, we've looked at conditionals as a whole block, where both clauses express the same idea. In the second conditional, both clauses are impossible in the present, future, or always, more or less. And in the third conditional, they're both about an impossible fact in the past. But in every language, based on what you want to say, you can also play with them and mix them, again depending on the concept you want to express. We can only mix the second with the third, we can't mix the zero and the first with each other or with any other conditional. If the basic concept is that you didn't study Chinese in school in the past, so now you don't live in China, in this case we have a combination of the past and the present, which we haven't seen so far. In this case, we use a third conditional in the if clause and a second conditional in the main clause. So if I had studied Chinese in school in the past, I would live in China now. Using if plus the third conditional followed by the second conditional in the main clause um, expresses the idea of how a different past would have had a different impact on your present. The next combination has I am not rich 
in the present or always. So yesterday I didn't buy a car in the past. In this case we have if I were rich yesterday I would have bought a car. We use if plus the second conditional followed by the third conditional in the main clause a little bit less than the first mixed conditional and this only refers to general life qualities, general traits and general stable situations that affected something in the past. The fact that you are not rich can refer to a fact that is always true. So I wasn't rich yesterday, I'm not rich today and I will not be rich tomorrow. So it's my general trait and quality not to be rich and that had the impact on my past yesterday because I did not have enough money to buy a car. I won't give you any more examples of this because I will give you some sentences that I want you to transform into conditionals in the comments. But before I do that, I want to tell you about the easier way to learn um, conditionals that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. After what I've just taught you, now you know exactly what your brain goes through and all the hard work that it puts in when it creates a conditional in your native language and in any foreign language that you speak. So when you want to create a conditional in another language you could technically think about when something happened and how probable it is but that will take you ages to then actually say the conditional with your actual words in a conversation and that's not the way that I prefer. When I speak German, I never use any of the knowledge I've just given you. I only have it in my head as a fun fact. What I did was memorise the structures for all the conditionals that they have. So I know that if I want to use a second conditional in English, I will have to use a second conditional in German, and I just need to remember how they create it. I will not think about whether I should use a second conditional over a third conditional because my brain has already done that in English without me thinking about it. So now I just simply translate the structures of the English second conditional into the German second conditional. The same happens for mixed conditionals, for a third conditional, for a first conditional. So what I suggest you do is just simply memorise how every language creates all the conditionals and just use them exactly the same way you would in your own language. Every time you use a third conditional in your language, you need a third conditional in the language that you're learning. And here are the basic concepts I want you to transform into conditionals in the comments based on when they happened and how probable they are. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And do let me know in the comments, as well as the transformations of the conditionals, if you'd ever thought about conditionals this way, and if you have any questions about how they work. In the meantime, I will see you on Thursday with my quick vocabulary video, and on Tuesday with another explanation one.